Hello and thank you for tuning in. My name is Mustafa Alabusi. I'm a radiology resident at McMaster University in Canada. I'd like to thank the BJU for inviting us to make this presentation for our study which was selected for article of the week uh, for August 2019 in the BJU. I'm going to take the next few minutes to tell you about our project which looks at uh, the use of different MRI protocols to detect prostate cancer. Um, and uh, you can see our lovely co-authors listed here on the project. And so these are the abbreviations we're going to be using just for your reference for the presentation. We'll start off with a bit of background. So prostate cancer is the second most common cancer affecting men. And it's been found that targeted screening with uh, digital rectal exams and PSA levels can reduce mortality. Uh, whereas prostate biopsies and pathology are the gold standard for diagnosis. MRI is now much more commonly used for prostate cancer assessment as well as local staging. And the standard multi-parametric protocol uh, uses three sequences, the T2 weighted imaging sequence, the diffusion weighted imaging sequence, DWI, as well as the dynamic contrast enhancement sequence, the DCE. And we're going to focus on this third one, the DCE, as it uses gadolinium and requires a longer scanning time. And so for assessing lesions on MRI, the PIRADS scale is used. So this is a five-point scale that basically uh, correlates to the likelihood that there's clinically significant prostate cancer for each lesion. So PIRADS 1 and 2 generally suggest benign lesions. PIRADS 3 suggests uh, uh, an intermediate risk, so it's equivocal for a clinically significant cancer, whereas PIRADS 4 and 5 are uh, high, more highly suspicious for clinically significant prostate cancer. And so within the peripheral zone, scores are mainly based on the DWI sequence. Um, and in this one, the DCE, which uses contrast, actually applies and it may upgrade PIRADS 3 lesions to PIRADS 4 if it's positive. Whereas within the transitional zone, the scoring is mainly based on a T2 weighted imaging sequence and the DCE sequence does not affect scoring of lesions in this zone. And so our objective was to perform a diagnostic test accuracy systematic review and meta-analysis to compare two protocols. The first is the standard multi-parametric MRI protocol, which uses the three sequences we discussed. Um, and to compare that to an abbreviated biparametric MRI protocol, which uh, uses only the T2 weighted imaging and the diffusion weighted imaging sequences. And we wanted to see how the two compared in diagnosing clinically significant prostate cancer in treatment naive patients. So we performed this systematic review and meta-analysis. We identified 31 studies, including just over 9,000 patients. And we found that biparametric MRI seemed to be non-inferior to multiparametric MRI in detecting prostate cancer in treatment-naive patients. So sensitivities for the two ranged between 86 to 90%, whereas specificities ranged from 70 to 73%, and both had overlapping confidence intervals for diagnostic accuracy. And as well, we can see there are overlapping comparative summary ROC curves for the two MRI protocols. What does this mean for us? Well, our findings suggest that the biparametric MRI protocol is non inferior to the standard multiparametric MRI one in detecting prostate cancer in treatment naive patients. So, our findings raise the possibility of the abbreviated BPMRI protocol being considered for potential first line imaging with the addition of the DCE sequence with contrast uh, post hoc on an as-needed basis. Alternatively, um, a baseline multiparametric standard MRI protocol can be performed with all subsequent follow-ups uh, using the abbreviated biparametric MRI protocol. Really, the focus here is that this abbreviated protocol, which um, it seems non-inferior to the standard, can be a safer, faster, and cheaper examination as it does not use gadolinium contrast. There's even studies now that are looking at biparametric MRI as a screening exam for prostate cancer, and we're excited to find out uh, more about what the results show for those. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.